Hello and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel in the first place. Today we have a Bakugo X listener, it's Saw You in a Dream by Fiction Please on AO3. The link will be in the description, but before we go ahead and get into it, this is going to be a series with multiple videos. This video is of the first five chapters, and let's go ahead and get into it. They told you it would be weird at first, going to sleep and waking up in another world for the night, then immediately forgetting every detail about it, the moment you opened your eyes the next day, but nothing could have prepared you for when it actually happened. You spent most of your day working on overdue assignments, getting texts from some friends, having a birthday on the weekend was surprisingly eventful. You fell asleep, curiosity bubbling, but letting the drowsiness take its course. It felt like falling. Falling, but not through the air, more like falling through water only to come up out the other side, taking a gulp of breath and scanning your surroundings. You were somewhere in a field. There was a cliff not too far away, showcasing clear blue water for as far as I could see. Sitting knees up to his chest was a blonde boy facing the sea, or what you guessed was the sea. You hesitantly walked up, keeping your distance. Uh, hey. He whipped his head around, Red eyes burning. Seeing you were a teenage girl, instead of some kind of monster, he untensed, but only slightly. You waited for him to at least attempt a reply, but when none came, you decided to take a seat next to him, albeit a couple feet away. It's pretty, isn't it? He didn't look your way, offering a hum of agreement. For some reason, everything hit you at once. You covered your face in your hands, trying to slow your breathing, remembering all the things your friends told you about getting overwhelmed. One breath in, one out, repeat. You good over there? He spoke up, voice traveling in the wind. His eyes were boring into yours, as you peeked one out from behind your curtain of fingers. Yeah, it's just a lot, don't you think? You kept your voice from wavering. He shook his head. You sighed, going on. I mean, all this. You waved your hands vaguely. You. Your hands waved more so in his vicinity. When I wake up, I won't remember any of it. Neither will you. He shrugged. So? You huffed. So? I don't even know your name. What are we doing in the middle of nowhere? Where did all this water come from? Where are you? Is any of this even real? He gave a flat-toned response. Slow down. You'll give yourself a damn headache if you don't calm down. You lifted a hand to your temples. Too late. He waved your concern away, like a leaf in the wind. Not like any of those questions matter either way. Clearly, we're meeting each other for some reason. Well, that one's obvious. We're soulmates. He quirked an eyebrow lazily. What's my name again? He stiffened. Right. It got quiet again. The simple sound of water and the distant chirping of birds. At least we're stuck somewhere nice. He hummed. You don't talk much, do you? He shook his head once. Doing too much thinking. Ah, sorry. You lowered your voice to a whisper. Don't want to disturb your thinking time. He rolled his eyes. Not everyone is as verbal as you are. Should I take that as a compliment? Do whatever you want with it. Not like you'll remember. He grumbled. You tisked. Okay, Mr. Pessimistic. He laughed. I've been called worse. Are you usually this calm? I just feel like he cut you off. Who cares? I just don't see the need to put on a show here. He sighed, returning your eyes to the skyline. I get that. It's just us here. Just us, he repeated. He glanced at him before deciding to lay down on the grass. It was incredibly soft and lush, for being grass. So, how much time do you think we have to kill? He shrugged. He kept talking. I highly doubt we're anywhere that's real, like on Earth. That caught his attention. Why? I've never seen grass like this. 
Your arms moved up and down, fingers carting through the light texture. His hands moved instinctively across the grass. His voice was quieter, devoid of its rough edge. It is pretty soft. Pretty soft? It's super soft. You jumped up a new vigor shooting through your bones. And that water? It's so, so blue, he offered. So blue, isn't it all amazing? He nodded. Hate to admit it, but it is quite the sight. Except at that moment, he wasn't looking at the soft grass, or the blue water, or even the big fluffy clouds passing by. He was staring at you. The question came to you like a light bulb turning on. Hey, I need to ask this before we wake up. He clicked his tongue. What is it? The wind blew harder around you two, his hair blowing like straw around his face. What's your name? The blaring of an alarm awoke you. You groaned, leaning over to shut it up. For some reason, a certain word was stuck in your head, on the tip of your tongue. Name? You shrugged it off, figuring Dream You would figure it out soon enough. The feeling of missing memories was weird enough. Having to get up early on a Sunday was a whole different kind of weird. The whole day seemed to pass in a flash of time. You didn't dwell too much on last night's adventure, figuring there was really no point. All the thinking in the world wouldn't bring back the memories you needed. Closing your eyes for the second time since turning 17, you let the wave wash over you again. Still not used to the feeling of falling though, you clenched your jaw, waiting for it to be over. You opened your eyes to a newly grey sky, great big rolling clouds further off in the distance. Taking a deep breath, you realized you were alone, no blonde boy. What could this mean? Did something bad happen? Is he okay? Before your mind could run any more wild, he poofed into existence on the grass next to you. You took a breath of relief and greeted him. He grumbled, arms protectively over his chest. We not so happy today? Shut up. You widened your eyes and right after rolled them. Okay then. Despite it being so cloudy, it didn't seem to be humid at all. Just the rumble of thunder across the water. Looks like it's going to rain. Good, he stated. Jeez, moody much? What's wrong? I don't know what you mean. His face was a clear slate. A hint of anger in the gleam of his eyes. Never once for beating around the bush. He decided to ask him straight. Clearly something's up, and I don't want to waste all of my time here with you huffing every five minutes. He tisked again and turned his head away. You know if you don't tell me, I'm going to start guessing. Still no response. Might as well have some fun with it. Did someone put ants in your bed while you were sleeping? No reaction. Fair enough, it was a lame guess. Did your dog eat your homework? I don't have a dog. His mumble barely above a whisper. And he speaks! You threw your arms up and mocked a light. You had me worried there. Thought I'd have to keep talking to myself. When he didn't move, you looked over. That's when you realized that the side of his jaw was purple and black. A clear bruise. You reached a hand up as if to touch him, but took it back at the last second. Hey, your voice noticeably softer. Are you hurt? He ignored you, clamping a hand on the mark. Doing great. As much as I'd like to believe you, people don't usually just get bruises overnight. At least not on their own. Nosy much? He unintentionally and unknowingly echoed your words from earlier. You huffed. Maybe he didn't want to talk about it. Fine. You did your part anyways. Silence settled over the two of you. The waves hitting the shore below and the occasional cricket chirp. The clouds seemed to get closer over time, but no rain had fallen. There was a... festival. 
He still didn't meet your eyes, but hey, at least he was talking again. A festival? Like the ones with cotton candy and funnel cakes? He blinked back into focus. No, dummy, a sports festival. Oh, that makes more sense. Keeping your answer short and clipped, you wanted him to go on. I won. Not that it feels like it. Confusion flowed through your features. He won, but didn't feel like it? I may be a little lost. He scratched his head absently. We had to compete against our classmates. I made it to the end, but damn Icy Hot passed out before any fighting could actually start. Ignoring the fact that you didn't know who Icy Hot is, you focused on the main point of his words. But you won, right? Doesn't that still count for something? He shook his head once. It's a sorry excuse of a victory is what it is. He sighed. I get that. Not that I've ever fought in any sports festivals, but I bet an automatic win isn't nearly as satisfying as getting one fair and square. Finishing your thought, you nodded once, enforcing the point. Seeing other people's sides wasn't a hard thing for you to do. Having a mother like the one you did, it was kind of a requirement. His eyes watched your movements warily. Yeah, exactly. Not used to people agreeing with him, the words came out uneasy, out of place. You both didn't speak much after that. He seemed to be fidgeting quite a bit though. How, uh, how was your day? You laughed at his weirdly pained expression. It hurt that much to ask? He rolled his eyes, turning his body the other way. Fine, didn't even want to know, was being polite. He sighed, pushing back the urge to lay back on the grass. How was your day? You had wanted to sleep in, especially since tomorrow was school again. But like every Sunday, your mom woke you up with the repeated flipping of the light switch, saying, How are you tired? Not like you do anything anyways. A simple variation of what she says every day. It was... busy. He didn't notice, too lost in thinking but he had turned to look at you, trying to read your far-off expression. Busy? You hummed subconsciously. Suddenly, the sound of something beeping was surrounding you. You turned to meet his tense gaze. You hear that? His eyes scanned the sky before going back to yours. No. As soon as the words came out of his mouth, you were back in your room. You woke up feeling... tense. Stomach in knots. You didn't have much time to think about it before your mom came barging in. You had successfully gotten up and dressed in 20 minutes. Not that anyone cared. Grabbing your backpack, about to walk out the door, you heard your mom's loud voice from her office. Make sure to take out the trash, you always forget. Sighing, you grabbed it and continued. Mumbling to yourself, you tossed it in the bin. Have a great day, listener. Don't worry about the trash. I can take it out. Thanks, Mom. You too. An older woman, walking her dog, side-eyed you as you passed. Perfect start to the day, huh? 12.37 a.m. Despite your effort put into studying as late as you could last night, there still managed to be a B-minus on your returned exam. Mom won't be happy about that. Didn't she realize that you wanted to get amazing grades too? You weren't getting B's and C's on purpose. It just seemed like ever since your dad passed away, all her energy was put into keeping you in shape. She barely even took time to grieve before jumping back into stacks of work, letting herself drown in it, instead of drowning in sadness. A better alternative? You couldn't be sure. You threw your trash away and walked to the next class. 6.30 p.m. The porch light was surprisingly on. Usually, you had to turn it on since your mom always forgot. Having decided to stop at your favorite coffee shop after school, the espresso did a little to curb your constant state of tired. You walked in, not expecting to see people in suits sitting at your dinner table, your mom being one of them. Oh, hi. Your mom pushed out of her chair and quickly ushered you into the kitchen. 
The people in suits watched with expressionless eyes. Listener, it's late. I'm in the middle of a company dinner. The kitchen was dimly lit, causing an off-putting shadow to be over her features. Ah, people in suits are her co-workers. Makes sense. Sorry, I didn't know you were having one, and I always come home at this time. Not that she ever noticed before. Honestly, this was the first time the dinner table was being used in weeks. She frowned and glanced back to the door. It's far too late for you to be out. Her eyes thinned. Unless you're out so late to meet up with someone, a secret boyfriend? Of course she would jump to that conclusion, because why not? No, mom, I don't have a secret boyfriend. She crossed her arms. Okay, time to exit this situation. I really have to get some studying done. Have a good dinner. Without another look, he slipped into the hallway. You could practically feel her death glare follow you to your room. In truth, you didn't have anything to study for, but that was the only way she'd ever let you get out of it. He walked into your room and threw your bag into a corner. You changed and sat on your bed, taking in a deep breath. How was it only Monday? You pulled your laptop to you, making sure it didn't bump anything in the air. Having your comfort show play in the background, you fell asleep to the jumbled voices. Now you embraced the feeling of falling, letting the air blow by. The cliff was back. So was the spiky-haired boy. You approached, hands in your pockets. Usual peppiness, not here today. Hey, I just realized I still don't know your name. He didn't turn to your voice, but still replied. It's Kotsky. Just Kotsky. Okay, just Kotsky. That's honestly a pretty cool name. Haven't heard one like it. That made him turn. Really? What's yours? Listener. Just listener. You laughed at his annoyed reaction. Figures. It was your turn to have an annoyed expression. What's that supposed to mean? Your name's just as boring as you are. You gasped loudly. Take it back. He stifled a laugh. It made you really curious to hear his full, real laugh. Nope, I'm good. You walked up to him very slowly and gave a good smack to his arm, which was surprisingly very firm. Whoa. What? You fought the blush and looked away. Nothing. Needing to change the subject, you asked. So, how was your day? We doing this again? It was fine. Normal classes, really. Oh, okay. He was watching you again. How was yours? How nice of you to ask. You lifted your hand to your heart mockingly. But really you appreciated the fact that he even asked. It was really the same. I walked into my mom having a work dinner. Basically got yelled at for sneaking out to meet my secret boyfriend. You did air quotations. Apparently he didn't read into the sarcasm. You weren't doing that, right? You laughed, shaking your head. <laughs> no, Kotsky. Unfortunately, I do not have a secret boyfriend at the moment. He nodded. Your mom sounds like the old hag. That better not be what you call your mom. He tisked, flipping his head around. Too bad, because it is. I'm not that surprised, but still. You started pacing, remembering how you didn't get a chance to tell your mom about the graded exam. Last time you came home without an A, she took all your devices away and didn't let you out of your room until you had the information engraved in your mind. Then she proceeded to give you back the exam, making you redo it, getting a perfect score. You really didn't want to have to do that again. Hey, stop the pacing. It's annoying. Why are you always so stuck in your head? You huffed, giving in and sitting down on the grass next to him. The sky was really pretty today, the sun closest to the horizon since having these dreams. Red and pink swirls, as if right out of a painting. Sorry, just worried. I'm assuming I have to ask why. He swung his head around to meet your aggressive gaze. Even if you did, now I don't want to say it, so forget it. He leaned over, shoulder nudging yours. 
Come on, you know I'm just kidding. Silence. You kept your thoughts to yourself. Suddenly, he stirred, turning his body fully towards you, legs crossed. He spread his arms out. Look, you have my full attention. Let's hear your worries. You simply gave him a glance. You know if you keep frowning like that, you'll have mad wrinkles when you're all old and shriveled. You lifted a hand to your mouth, trying to mask your laugh. You took a deep breath and mimicked his moves from earlier. Now sitting directly in front of him, you didn't say a word. His eyes were a lot redder than you first thought. And funny enough, if you looked closer, you realized that they weren't even the same shade. One was darker than the other. You have a staring problem. His eyebrow quirked. What's so interesting about my face? You focused your gaze more so on his lips, yours forming into a soft smile. By now, he had to refrain from grabbing your face and making you look into his eyes. You looking solely at his lips had him wanting to squirm, and he did not like that feeling. You're not even old and shriveled yet, and you already have those wrinkles. You couldn't keep the laugh from bubbling out, knowing you had really gotten him. There was practically steam coming out of his ears, such a flip from the emotions that were previously coursing through him. Shut up, no I don't! His voice boomed, but you still kept laughing. Anyways, you started talking, figuring you might as well take advantage while you have him here. Yeah, I kinda got a bad grade on an exam, and I'm not excited for my mom's reaction. His eyes strayed before meeting yours again. What was the grade? I'd highly doubt that my soulmate could be that dumb. You rolled your eyes. I gotta be. He blinked. Tell me why you're worried again. Sighing. I'm not the one who thinks it's a bad grade. It's my mom. Anything other than an A is... He paused, doing your best impression of her. Completely unacceptable. Then that's not your problem. She's the weird one. You looked down, fiddling with your hands. She's still my mom. Is your dad the same way? Your eyes shot up. Everyone in your life already knew about your dad. You hadn't heard someone refer to him as if he were still around in months. It was a weird feeling. You didn't have time to respond. The last thing you saw were his concerned eyes before rolling awake in your bed. Waking up really missing your dad, even though you didn't know why. It was Tuesday. You unfortunately were right to worry about your mom's reaction to the grade. She kind of blew up, and by kind of, you meant really blew up. Are you kidding me, listener? You have the audacity to get such a lousy grade when I'm over here working my you-know-what off for your sake? The least you could do is keep up your grades. It's probably because all of that time you spend off at that cheap coffee shop by the school, isn't it? You spend all your time there instead of using it wisely and studying. That wasn't even the worst of it. Just for that, I want you to start coming home straight after school. I'll be tracking you from the time it takes to let out, and if I see so much as one useless detour, you won't like the outcome. The fact that you think any college would accept these careless education habits is beyond me. Here's the real kicker though. Your dad would be so disappointed. The sad thing was, logically, you knew she was overreacting. Her grief had a weird way of coming through at times. Mostly through anger, mostly directed at you. And even if you could understand the logic behind it, doesn't mean it hurt any less to hear. So, needless to say, that afternoon wasn't the best. The moment you walked through the door, she was there with her hand out, ready to take your phone. You even spent most of it studying, not wanting to get on her bad side more so. Though you didn't do much in all, the day was tiring, mentally. These times were the hardest without your dad. He was always your biggest supporter, right down to the very end. When you were down in the dumps, he would always take you for a drive and let you rant about whatever was bothering you that week. You'd come home feeling like a weight was lifted off your chest. Now that weight just grew heavier. With each hurtful word your mom spoke, with each new assignment due, with each ache of grief in your heart, it grew. 
That night, sleep took you without resistance. Fireflies. They twinkled in and out of your eyesight, the warm glow emanating, cast moving shadows all around you. It was finally nighttime, wherever this place was, and it was beautiful. Tonight, you got there earlier than Kotsky once again. Taking the extra alone time, you wandered around the trees, led solely by moonlight. Finding that it became thicker and thicker brush, you made your way back to y'all's spot by the cliff. The grass softly moved with the wind. A single daisy was poking out near a bush, and you picked it, thinking maybe he'd like it. Laying back on the grass, you felt the drowsiness pulling at your eyelids. The now familiar buzz of fireflies and the breeze of leaves had too calming of an effect. A couple minutes later, you heard the familiar thumping footsteps come closer. He didn't say a word, instead settling down next to you. His fingertips accidentally brushed against yours through the threads of grass. He didn't move. Neither did you. Assuming it went great with your mom. Oh yeah, amazing. Couldn't have gone better. Your voice was dripping in annoyance. Not towards him, towards her. Sorry, he mumbled, Pinky suddenly grasping yours. You didn't want to freak out, so you stayed still. His small gesture meant more than he could have known. It's fine, you breathed out. Let's change the subject, okay? How was your day? Probably as great as yours went. We had some intense training course and somehow everyone managed to piss me off. He let out a soft chuckle. To be fair, Kotsky, it's not that hard to piss you off. Say it again. His voice was just above a whisper, but it managed to cut to your core some way. It's not hard to piss you off. Come on, you know, my name. He cut you off. Kotsky? He hummed satisfied. I like the way you say it, putting emphasis on the ending syllables. It's... You sat up suddenly, heat flooding your neck. Is that not the right way to say it? His gruff laugh rang out at your clear worry. No, no, it's just you still managed to add your own flair. Oh, okay. I was about to be real embarrassed right there. Clearly. His eyes turned to the star-filled sky. You an astrology kind of guy? No. I don't even know why I asked. With the absence of city light and pollution, the stars seemed to burn brighter than usual, the constellations clear and easy to pick out. Since you feel like asking questions, what's your quirk? I can't deal with my soulmate having some crappy quirk. I'm quirkless. Now he sat up, facing you, confliction on his face as clear as the constellations above you. Shoot, really? He smirked. No, just wanted to see how you'd react. That was actually a lot better than expected. He scowled, huffing back onto the grass. That was stupid. I have sort of telekinesis. I can move things with my mind at will. It comes in handy. He hummed in response, too busy thinking your response through. It was mostly about how well you'd potentially hold up against a villain. Always the analyst. Well, what's yours? He sighed. I can create explosions. You covered a laugh. Shut up, that's too perfect. Did you say earlier that you had an intense training course? Do you go to some fancy quirk school? He chose to ignore your not-so-subtle jab at the start. Yeah, actually. Top hero school in Japan. Your eyes widened. Wow, that's awesome. Despite now realizing you live about as much as a continent away, he didn't answer. You decided to keep talking, if only to fill the silence. I don't go to any type of hero school. Just a regular old high school. I never thought of becoming a hero. For me, it's always been about getting into a good college. Sounds boring. Yeah, I agree. The feel of the daisy you picked earlier came through from the pocket in your pants. A bit smushed, but it would have to do. I got you this flower, picked it myself. You added some pride into the tone of your voice. 
Holding it out between your fingers, the petals manage to stay all intact, floating and swaying with the breeze. He looked over, wide eyes, finally seeming to realize that you wanted him to take it. His calloused fingers grazed against yours. Holding it in the middle of you two, his eyes flickered back and forth at yours. It seemed as the whole forest behind y'all was at a standstill, suddenly interested in what was happening next. Silence, but not the thick kind. The kind of silence that came when you didn't need spoken communication to know how the other was feeling, where each breath let out was a confirmation of the acceptance. Soulmates may be faded, but does that mean you're destined to fall in love with them? You didn't want to know the answer, didn't want to think that this feeling in your chest was anything but a true and pure reaction. A flash of light, you both jumped, a single lightning strike miles away across the ocean. Funny odds, seeing as there wasn't a single cloud out that night. Wednesday came and went like a candle being blown out. Thankfully, today was a pretty relaxed day as far as school went, as relaxing as school could be. For reasons unknown to yourself, you felt extra happy waking up that morning, like there was a tingle in your chest that wasn't there before, a newfound hopefulness. And when you went to sleep that night, you were smiling. A cool breeze brushed against your skin, the sun was out, the birds were chirping, and for the first time in a while, Katsuki was there before you. He sat, knees up to his chest, facing the skyline. Hey listener, you finally made it. You resisted the urge to add a skip in your step, thinking it would be too embarrassing, but the light inside you still managed to show. I don't want to hear it, don't act like you haven't been late. You took a seat next to him, copying his stance. You're making things up. Lying is in a good quality. He drew out the end of the word, teasing. Looking away, he hid the smile on his face. You huffed. Whatever. Oh, okay, so I have a great idea. Let's hear it. I realize that we don't even know that much about each other, so let's do a fun question game. Question game? Yeah. You lowered your voice while speaking. Well, now I realize it's not really a game, we're just gonna ask each other questions. But still... Okay, you go first so I can think of a question. He kind of threw off your game. You should have thought of questions beforehand. Not like that was really possible. If only he could have been late today. Um, alrighty. What's your go-to snack? He rolled his head over to look at you. You shrugged. What? I didn't have that much time to prepare either. Plus, it's a helpful question if we ever do get to meet. Fine. Honestly, anything spicy I'm good with. None of the cheap crap, though. That's never worth it. You wanted to know what he classified as cheap crap, but you figured he'd just get more annoyed. Cool. Good to know. My turn. You nodded, curious to hear what he wanted to know. Who's your favorite hero? You snickered. Are you a secret nerd, Kotsky? Shut up, no, you're the one who made up this dumb game. Now, now, don't bash my super creative game. So, my favorite hero, huh? You put a finger up to your chin, really thinking about it. You didn't really pay attention to the popular heroes or their names. You remembered your dad always telling you stories of a hero named All Might, but you never heard about him outside of the stories. If anyone knows what happened to that guy, Kotsky the hero nerd would. Is there one called All Might? A series of emotions flashed through his eyes. Admiration, hurt. Yeah, there is. He is actually the number one hero here in Japan. You drew in a quick breath. Really? I didn't know. Then how do you know his name? His eyebrow quirked in suspicion. You gave him a smirk. Pretty sure it's my turn to ask a question, Katsuki. He responded with a glare. Fine. My dad used to tell me bedtime stories where All Might always saved the day, 
showing up to the scene with a recognizable I am here every time. Kotsky had a faraway look on, staring at some indistinct part of the trees behind you. He nodded. Yeah, he's pretty great. There was a hint of sarcasm in his voice, though. You wouldn't have known why. So, next question. The atmosphere was thickening a bit too much for your liking. So, I know you don't like your mom, or at least I'm assuming. Does that mean you're closer to your dad? You didn't really know much about his family at all. Figured it was a good place to start as any. No. No? So you don't get along with either of your parents? You shot him an accusatory tone. I mean, my dad is fine. My mom is just too much all the time. My dad is the complete opposite. There isn't really a middle ground in my family. And you're an only child? He nodded, confused why it mattered. You nodded too. Makes sense. Excuse me? What is that supposed to mean? His ability to get heated so easily just made you laugh. His fuse was incredibly short. Nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't tell me what to do, he growled. You quirked an eyebrow at him. Even though you've only known each other for a couple days, really, you're already able to calm him down with just a look. Or at least sort of calm him down. Okay, no calm, you could just shut him up. Anyways, uh, your turn to ask a question. He sighed. Do you have feelings for anyone? You sat up straighter. Like, right now? Yeah, anyone special up there? He nodded towards the sky. Does Awake You have any feelings for anyone? You didn't really think of anyone that way, or at least you didn't think so. Dream You, though? That was a different story. You shook your head. Nope. Wait, do you? It would honestly be kind of weird if he were in love with someone, seeing as you were soulmates. But still, he didn't answer, staring at you like your eyes held the perfect response. You shifted awkwardly. Okay, who has this staring problem now? There was someone. Oh? Yeah, they... They put up with my crap and haven't left my side since I met them. That sounds nice. That was an appropriate response to your soulmate telling you about their crush, right? Yeah, except lately I haven't been sure. Why? Did something happen? I met someone else. His eyes met yours again. When a flush went up your neck, he smirked and looked away. She's kind of a loser with no friends, but I mean, she makes me laugh, so I guess it's worth the stupid butterflies. If this is some other loser you're talking about, this conversation is about to get super awkward. He laughed, and you nudged his shoulder. It's crazy, though. I recently met someone, too. What a coincidence. You nodded, looking at the rippling water below. Oh yeah, he has quite the temper on him. But the every once in a while that I catch his gaze, his eyes make me forget everything else. He looked away, internally cursing the red in his face. That sounds like some gross cheesy stuff. His hand was resting on the grass between you, reaching out. You linked your pinky with his. Super gross. You squeezed his finger, and he gave one in return. The sun hit your skin like a fleeting kiss. Breeze brushing your hair from your neck. His callous pinky against yours. Was like a long lost feeling that felt right in all ways. Even when you didn't know what would happen tomorrow, being here with him, you couldn't bring yourself to care. Spending the rest of the night imagining how a lifetime of these moments must feel. Alright, that's the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed, except this isn't actually the end. There will be more parts to this. I just don't want to have a super duper long video. Um, yeah, I promise you it gets a lot better. Not that this wasn't already good. I actually really did enjoy recording this, so please go check out the author in the description. I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, whatever, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye!